Okay, welcome everybody. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on creating an Andy Warhol inspired, uh, we'll call it a polyptic, in four quadrants um, using kind of the Andy Warhol style inspired by the image that he did of Marilyn Monroe. So to get started, we're gonna create a new document in Photoshop, similar to what we've done before. Let's name this one Warhol uh, exercise one. And let's make sure that it's seven by seven inches and 300 resolution and click create. And you will get a square canvas here. Um, let's also make sure that you can see your rulers here. And if you can't see this, um, you can just go up to the view window or view menu and just make sure that extras and rulers are both checked. Okay. Um, I, I can see that you guys can't see my, the very top here. So I'll just read what it is. It's, it's view. It's under the view men menu, extras and rulers. And if your rulers are not in inches, you can change that by going up to the Photoshop menu and under preferences, so it's the Photoshop menu, preferences, you wanna change the units and rulers here to make sure that your uh, ruler units are in inches and hit okay. And then it should look like this. Now to create the guides, all you need to do is come up into the ruler up here and just pull and drag. And I'm gonna go halfway, which is 3.5 inches and let go. And then I'm gonna go over to the left and pull to the right, halfway, 3.5, to create these four equal uh, quadrants. All right, now we're gonna add colors, unique colors to each one of these squares. And to do that, I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool, second one down here. And I'm just gonna create, I'm dragging from the top left corner down to the bottom here. And you can see how it changes color. It's snapping to let me know that I've selected that whole space. Now I've got the little marching ants around there and I can fill it with a new color. I can access my colors two ways. One, I can double click on the foreground color here at the bottom of my tool tab, or I can go over to the color tab here click to expand it. And right over here in the right, these are all the different hues you can choose from. And um, for this one, let's go with an orange background, more orangey than that. And you can change the tint and the shade by just coming inside this color zone here and dragging up will make it lighter and dragging down will make it darker. So I, I like that. I'm gonna Close that up there and I can see that the color is loaded and ready to go. So now I, all I need to do is fill this. And to fill it, we go to the edit menu, drop down to fill. And by default, if you're not on foreground color here, it might be on content aware, you might wanna change, or you wanna change it to foreground color and click okay. And there we go. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna continue um, changing the color of each one of these quadrants. I'll click on this to expand it. We'll make this one, let's go with a, a light blue. I can hide that and I'm going back up to edit fill and it'll fill that zone there. And I'm just gonna keep going through and <clears throat> assigning a new color to each zone here. We'll make this one, let's go green. Like green. And edit, fill. And then the more we do this, the more we kind of remember how to do all these things. So we'll do them all at the same time, selecting with the rectangular marquee. Letting go, I'm gonna choose a color. We'll just keep going down here. We'll go yellow and edit, fill, okay. And now I have all four quadrants ready with the background. You can see it's reflected here in my layer. Uh, if you want to hide this and give yourself a little more room to work, you can click on those double arrows to get rid of it. If you want to deselect something, you can see that bottom right quadrant is still selected. Command D on the Mac will deselect it. 
All right, so the next step is to add our image to the canvas. So <clears throat> to add the image, we are going to go to File, Place Embedded. We will search for the image on our computer. I have it on the desktop. I have this image of Basquiat here. I'm gonna place that in and it's too big and not square. So I need to scale it and I'm gonna just let it kind of fit in this zone here. And I like this here, but obviously there's too much down here. So we can handle that in just a moment. Um, I'm going to hit return to finish placing this, or you can click on this checkbox there. So I wanna mask it so that just the top portion of Basquiat is shown. And so I'll use my rectangular marquee tool again to select this area. And down here, I can see that there's this new layer with Basquiat on there. And I'm going to make sure that's selected and click on the add a layer mask button. And now it fits right there in that square. And I wanna remove this background because I wanna see that orange behind it. So to do that, you can use the quick selection tool like we did in the last exercise, or you can use the object selection tool. Let's stick with this quick selection tool, I like it. And that was a nice quick selection. I noticed how I just stayed inside his frame. I don't wanna select this, so I didn't ever leave his frame there. And then I'm gonna come up and click this button at the top of the canvas, my select and mask button, and it's showing me my selection. The red background here is just because of my view mode. You might be on a different view. To change how you see it, you can look under this view mode and this just helps you see what your selection is. Um, I like this red for what we're doing. And the opacity slider shows me the original. That's the original. And as I slide the opacity to the right, this is my selection. Now you can see here, I'm missing some detail around his hair. So I'm gonna let Photoshop clean that up for me by clicking that refine hair button and it did a good job. And now I just need to get out of this view uh, by outputting my selection to a layer with a layer mask. So I'm gonna come over here, scroll down to the bottom to the output settings, click on the output settings to expand it and make sure you're outputting your selection to a new layer with a layer mask and click okay. Oops, I take that back. Let's, um, Let's output it to a new layer. Oh, I have to redo the whole thing. Um, it's because it's giving me this bit too. Um, this button here will allow us, or this, this tool here allows you to um, mask away parts you don't want. So that green, I don't want that. I'm just gonna erase it. And I'm holding down the shift key to subtract from my selection, um, you could also come up here and click that. Okay, I'm still going to refine the hair and now we're back to where we were. Output my selection to a new layer. If I just do new layer, it'll take that selection and output it. If you might, if you think you want to change it, um, it's nice to have a layer mask because then you can just add or subtract to your layer. So New layer would just do this and give you Basquiat right there on a transparent background. If you did with the layer mask, it would have a little mask here so you could always um, change that later. Um, so now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna delete this layer here and begin um, prepping the rest of these sections. So to do that, if you, when you guys create your own, if this were in color, you'd want to desaturate it by going up to image adjustments, desaturate. But since it's already a black and white image, 
we can move on to the next step, which is adding a threshold adjustment. And you can adjust this to your liking and click OK. And once you have your image converted as a threshold um, to color image, now we can um, start kind of setting us up to move through each one of these. And I'm going to copy this image. The easiest way to do it is to use your move tool and select and drag while holding the option key. And I'll keep doing that. I'm holding the option key, using the move tool, clicking and dragging, and it's just creating copies for me, which is nice. You can see now I have four layers and Basquiat is on all these layers here. A uh, good idea to rename your layers. This is the top left image and you can always turn the visibility on and off to know which image you're on. And this one is the bottom. And this one is the bottom right, bottom right. And this one is the top. You can always move these and organize them by selecting your layers and just moving them around. And now I've got my top left and right layers next to each other and my bottom left and right layers next to each other, which I like because I can just go through them in sequence. So we'll start with the top left. What we'll do now is we're gonna add a gradient map to each one of these images. A gradient map will allow me to change the black and the white to new colors. So we'll go to image adjustment gradient map. And you can see it automatically added the yellow to the dark, the black zone and the black to what was white before. So I wanna change that. To change it, all you have to do is double click inside the gradient map and this gradient editor opens up. So I wanna change the yellow. To change the yellow, I'm gonna double click on the bottom color chip here and choose new colors. So for this, we'll go with, um, go with a darker brown. And then for the skin, I'll double click on this chip on the right here, the black chip, to open up my color picker. And we will choose a new hue. And we're gonna do this four times. We'll do this for each one of those. And you can see as I'm moving around um, the color picker, it's giving me a preview over here. And I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna click okay, okay, okay. And then move on. Now I'm gonna go to the top right section. And it's each time it's gonna, add that same default color. So um, I'm going to image adjustments and gradient map. And here we are again, I'm gonna click inside the gradient map, double click on the yellow color chip to choose the next color. Let's go with like a darker blue for this. Click okay and then double click on the bottom color chip on the right and choose a new color and we'll go with the, that looks the pink and hit okay. We'll keep going down bottom left, uh, image adjustments, gradient map, double click, click on the bottom left chip to choose your next color here we'll go with like a dark, nice dark kind of violet color. And we'll change the, the inside to, let's go with like a greenish color, let's go with a lighter green. And it's working. Okay, click okay, okay. And finally, the last one, we'll go image adjustments, gradient map, and double, we'll just click inside that gradient map, select the bottom left chip, double click. And for this one, let's go 
we'll go with a bold red color and let's change this to let's go with a light blue okay all right and how do i if you invert the colors to a lighter color and a darker color it'll give it kind of a negative um film quality to it so i wanted to stay with a positive and so the color value on the left should be darker than the color value on the right if that's your intention um, and this looks pretty good. So I'm going to save it now. Command S will save it. I am gonna save this to the cloud documents. Right now what I'm saving is the Photoshop document. Um, so anytime if I wanna come back and edit these, I can. And then um, I also need to save it as a JPEG. So we'll go to file, export as, Remember, a JPEG is what you're going to turn in and make sure your format is set to JPEG. And then go ahead and export that. Choose a spot on your computer where you keep your edited pictures. And the naming convention should default to whatever you named it, right? Uh, Warhol Exercise 1. This is your JPEG. Click Save and turn into Google Classroom. And that is it, folks. Thank you so much.